Yo, what's good, my Jesus, please? Good tidings to you. Glory be to God, Jesus, our mother and father. Let us go forth naturally as we should, with faith, honesty, joy, and enthusiasm, and reject the negative notions of hopelessness, of dependence on things, of anticipation of what may come, and trying to force events. Let us go forth. Yo, 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 y
Um, you know, I think it's interesting when I make YouTube videos and, you know, I give my theories and I say my piece. And it really makes me think about what I've said, you know. And sometimes I'll make a YouTube video and afterwards I'll be like, have I really said that? Is that, is that possible? And quite often, like, a few days later, you know, I hear something on the news or, you know, something comes out that reaffirms what I was saying. And um, it's much rarer that, um, that it's the opposite, that something comes out and goes against it, although that happens too. And I guess this is how I, how I go through... Um, my life because to me um, sort of understanding the world and everything is 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 a big important thing like the better you understand it the better you can can go through <laughs> go through life making these decisions based on your understanding of what the world is so you know, I think we all agree that it's uh, very confusing. Why do you want my email? Why? Signing in what? Yeah, it's not my email. It's the one in your blue book. Oh, okay. So how we're understanding the world affects how we deal with, how we make our decisions, you know. Um, I think that's a really important thing. So I'm always trying to understand more. And I think, what I was about to say, I think we all agree that it's very confusing, you know, to, to try and understand it. Uh, the, you know, perhaps the vast majority just go along with, well, the cleverest people in the world, all those scientists, you know, God, they can write a lot of pages with long words. You know, they must be the ones who are um, closest to the truth. So therefore, we'll just sit behind them. I heard a reflection of that to do with the climate change. Um, you know, you can... Uh, Prince William launched uh, the Earthshot thing, so they're talking about it on the radio, and I heard, you know, a journalist or whatever saying, you know, they were looking into some someone who'd won a UN technology prize for growing plants using, say, I don't know, 20% less water. But then if you, you know, spread that all around the world, you know, he, he made a statement, you know, you could recover uh, the land the size of Germany... Uh, you know what I mean? It's all theoretical science, but effectively, you know, you'd get that much extra land. And then the the journalist got, you could hear in his voice, he was quite excited, you know. What he'd really like is, is you know, some of these people to come out with a few more of these inventions, and then he could just carry on life as normal. Um, and... Basically, the only changes we would have to make as normal people is instead of picking that off the shelf in the shop, uh, we pick that off the shelf in the shop and we've saved the world, you know, and it's just not going to be like that. Um, so I make a lot of these statements and this is what I've been doing for quite a while is just making these statements so like it ain't going to happen like that. And the reason I do that is because I've, I've, I've seen it clearly. I've. <laughs> Hello, Lecter. <laughs> I've ever. It's not going to be like that. Ever. No. Right. How do I explain that one? How do I know we're going to have to live in harmony with nature? Because it's such a simple solution, isn't it? Get on with nature. Right now, I do understand that you know we shouldn't necessarily just go back to living in caves and living in caves with electricity and a laptop. I don't know. What's 
What's the deal with that? Is that the future of us? Is that how I see it? No. Because I, I have glimpsed the deeper world. I've been raptured. Okay, so all these rapture videos and stuff, you know, I know that there isn't going to be a day when loads of people get sucked off the earth. Because when you've been raptured, you know you can, you, it doesn't matter if I'm on this planet or that planet or whatever, because where I'm going, when I meet God and speak to God, if you like, communicate with God, feel God, it's not in a physical dimension. It's not even in a spiritual dimension. It's in the dominant emotional dimension and you know so when people are having dreams of being raptured and they're going up they're obviously feeling that sensation of going up caught up that's what rapture means and you get caught up with god so okay i'll um i'll explain the first time i was caught up I was probably close to being caught up when I was 19, but I was too afraid of it. So there was a fear block towards this feeling that was coming. And it was scary, you know, I ran away from it. I went to Norway, went in the army, get myself disciplined, think about physical problems. I just only wanted to know about physical problems at that stage. Yeah, I come back to England and I gradually Go back into the old cannabis, which is the escape. You know, if you want to escape, you can escape. As the, a lot of these people who want to be raptured do. They want just to escape. And I do too. But I found tools which will enable me to escape. And cannabis is one of them. So, what was going on with me is 2000 and 13, I thought the world was going to end. I thought it was it. I thought that was it. It's happening. So I got the, you know, exciting feelings. It's definitely happening. Be ready. It's got to be happening. Now the people on YouTube, they're all saying it. And it's like May 2013. And I made a video. This is it. Head for the hills. Shared it on Facebook. Got a bit ridiculed. Lo and behold, nothing happened. So that was a learning experience. Okay, so we're still here. But I was getting into spiritualism. I was getting back into that. Um, I'd made a decision in about 2005. Something about that, that 2006. That God, God was probably just everybody put together. Anyway, 2014's coming round, and in June, July, <clears throat> <coughs> I'm getting this feeling that you know something's going to change. I really wanted it to change as well. I really, I needed something. You know, I was, I was definitely lacking. I'd had a couple of these. Um, depressive moments like really strong feelings like but you know really unpleasant like I didn't belong here that sort of feeling it wasn't right and um, and then in that summer I, I remember going outside once and seeing a shooting star and I had this thing where if I was having a thought and I saw a shooting star, it meant that thought was true. Like when I went to Norway, I saw a shooting star. Just as I was thinking I should go to Norway, to the army, I saw a shooting star. So I had this thing like, heaven is coming to earth. That was what it said, something like that. Heaven is coming to earth. And I saw this big shooting star. Then, about a week later, I stumbled onto this A.J. Miller. And I watched about two of his videos and then went on a 
two week holiday so I was going on my holiday anyway All right, so I just caught a couple of his videos before I went on holiday and then came back and watched some more and he was saying this stuff when he was talking about the soul and the spirit body in which I've noticed his in Plato I was just listening to Plato Timius recently and he also says this um, it was just hitting me straight away I was just that's I could you know I could I could feel it right and 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 then I um, my dad died on September the 10th but he he'd been dying slowly gradually so it was almost like a relief in a sense and then his funeral was on the 22nd of September so I had lots of family and stuff coming over and friends and went to the funeral back at my mum's house she wasn't quite alright she ducked out pretty early on but loads of us were having a really good time you know, my dad was a party guy give him a good send off and um, I hadn't I had, I'd given up cannabis for two weeks I hadn't smoked cannabis for two weeks partly because it's AJ Miller and your addictions and stuff like that um, but my cousin had some weed and I was like yeah, party, I had a beer and had a few tokes of her spliff and I don't know if, how long go, how long had passed maybe 15 minutes, maybe half an hour but I'd gone back inside to have a dance I really don't know what triggered it but suddenly I was getting the feeling of getting high right so sort of used to that but having had a two week gap it was really strong now so I'd felt these this sort of strong high coming up before right I've smoked cannabis most of my life right with a few gaps but this time I trusted a lot more in what was happening because whereas before I I'd had this before say I'd had it three or four times maybe five and it was similar to that stuff that was happening to me as 19 that I was scared of that I ran away from so it's almost similar like that so usually I'd hit this ceiling and it wasn't nice it wasn't nice hitting the ceiling it, and it was like after that you know I don't want to be stoned I don't want to, do you know what I mean but this time after hearing AJ Miller and getting this idea that God is our mother and father and God isn't just this sort of thing that's all souls and that God was a personal entity my mother and father I trusted in this feeling and I went through that ceiling so you could say it very much it does feel like you're going up and the, on that one occasion that one first time as I hit the ceiling went through the ceiling going up and the, the feeling is just wonderful euphoric for some reason there was this like green mist as though it was you know as though it was one of those spotlights on me I suppose and I had to like wonder is this happening to everybody you know are we all going in this thing right now and you know with a glance around over my shoulder I could see that it was just me so I'm like you know scared but go with it and obviously no one really knows what's happening to me around but my brother's in front of me you know we're all dancing in the lounge and that so at some point I, I you know and he sees me and I'm happy so I just give him a big hug and all the time this feeling is just going through me so I'm just grabbing onto him <laughs> uh, so he didn't really 
know what was going on either. But so that was that was the feeling, and and it lasted and I don't know how long, another minute or so. And you know, obviously after that, I'm just wow and awesome, right? Just amazing thing to happen. And um, interestingly, the next day I was doing this talk, and I knew, but I didn't really bring that up, but because I already had this new stuff to bring up in the talk anyway about AJ Miller. Anyway, that threw the talks off, so that's not much more happened with the talks nor with my YouTube videos. But anyway, that doesn't matter. So this thing happened to me, and the next day I was buzzing for a few days anyway. But I was doing my thing, I wasn't smoking cannabis. But clearly, I wanted to see if it would happen again. If I had, after another couple of weeks, if I had some more, whether, whether you know, I would get this <laughs> again. And um, so I sorted it out with the guy I was getting off at the time, and... At the time, actually, he had this amazing stuff. It was sort of really natural skunk, sort of skunk, but grown outdoors in the sunlight or something. Anyway, it was, it was really good. And um, so I did this again, and I, I had a little bit at his house. So it had been like 10 days or something, and I was sitting around there, and, and I... I had just a little weak one and I could feel it coming up like I could allow it to go if I wasn't sort of talking at the same time and everything. And then I tapped into this sort of long held fear I had back from like the age of three. And I thought, hmm, maybe not a good idea to do fear when I'm so high anyway. Not like getting complicated. So anyway, and then um that, so that wasn't the one I videoed. So I think when I came back from here, so I then had a decent strong one. And was that? No, so I'm not sure I wanted another one at night. I think I waited until the next day. Anyway, I remember sitting out and I hit these emotions. I hit these. You know, so again, I was feeling up, and then whatever I thought about, and it was my younger brother, and there was so much stuff to do with him to think about, you know, because we have a, a lot to do with each other through our lives. And I was crying, and then, um, you know, but crying, happy crying, like I was really achieving something. It felt like I was, you know, breaking through, and... You know, I was. I was breaking through into the emotional realm, something I had very much suppressed. I was very much a suppressor of emotion. I like to keep things even. That's what I had worked out how to get through life at the time, was to just keep things even. And um, But that was causing the, 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 the depression things that I'd, that I'd had a couple of, and I didn't like them. So anyway, so that so the second so that was the second time. So I was I was doing the AJ Miller thing, and I was um, and I was um, yeah feeling my emotions very much based on the advice and stuff like that. But I could you know I could sense God, and I remember looking. Well, I wasn't looking because I was meditating, but I remember the sun being over there, and I just felt like there was a, a man on the sun waving at me. And you know, I know now that's Father God. I didn't know that at the time. So then I have another two week break, or ten days, I think it was happening. <laughs> After about 10 days, I was like, come on, let's have some more. I think 10 days was enough. And then the third time was the one I filmed. So that's on my Faithful Philosopher video. Uh, there's four parts to it. I'll explain it all. 
and uh, not filmed in that one but on that because I went to America straight after that <laughs> booked a ticket and went to America impulsively but before I did that I so I was getting in some deep stuff but I also encountered the one love so I didn't know at the time I was thinking that was God so I had met Father God waving at me from the sun but I was also encountering this this one love this very very strong if you call it, Holy Spirit and at the time I thought it was Father God but um, it was teaching me to receive love and respond with love just very basic but there was a moment in there where it felt like if I didn't want to continue existing I didn't have to it all you know what I mean like on the deepest level existing if oh it felt like I almost had the power if I wanted to to shut it off and it's really I can't describe how you know it's something I'd never want anyone to have to experience but I think at some stage when we're when we're ready we we will we have to so have I been raptured yet I mean yeah that that first one that was the rapture but at this time too like on the third one this is also when I got the first like there was a reason for this why was this happening to me you know there was a reason for it so you know, uh, you know and the story goes on and on and on and on <laughs> it's a boring Like uh, Zach says, you you tune you tune in uh, for me here. Upon the way 
don't do that with the copyright. Sail them home with our queers on a ship of hope today. And as they land upon the shore, tell them not to fear no more. Sing it loud and sing it proud today. If they want to dance, please, brother, take a chance. You know they're gonna go which way they want to go. We know is that we don't. Oh, shit, that's, gonna, that's definitely going to get copyrighted because it's so good. Are we, are we done? Are we done? All right, let's just get to this bit because I like this. Definitely gonna get copyrighted. The guitar is out of tune, so that helps. Um, that'll do. So, so then, still working. I imagine that was far too loud for the speakers. And that was um, six years ago, maybe. And here we are. And I'm sick. I am absolutely sick of this COVID. I'm going to start going barefaced, I think. And yeah, I wasn't the sort to be in crowds, but I, do you know what I mean? I really want to be in a crowd. I really want to be in a crowd of people, everybody touching, sweat and everything. I think, um, I think we actually need it. I think we, we almost perhaps depend on it partly for our, uh, bacterial, um, flora that we, we need to keep them healthy. Maybe they need the interaction. Yeah. It's probably it. They're trying to kill the bacteria of people. Bastards. There's cleanliness, isn't it? You know Nero burned Rome because he couldn't stand the smell of his people. <laughs> You're sick of the stench of them. I think he burned Rome for other reasons. But there's a film called Quo... Quo... Vadis? Quo Vadis? Means where are you going? It's a film. Bloody good film. About Nero. It's about after uh, Yeshua. And that. So still while uh, Paul was around. So Paul's in it and Peter's in it. Not massively, it's mostly about Nero. Uh, very interesting, good film. Or is it mostly about one of Nero's advisors? I mean, you could probably blame the advisors for some of the behaviour. I mean, they're, they're the ones who brought them up, aren't they? These young leaders are brought up by state officials. And who knows what bugs to bear they have and what chips on the shoulder they have. You know, even if it is subconscious. Oh, I tell you what. Again, in this uh, Plato's Timius, I haven't finished listening to it. But you want to? Women want to know who to thank that they have such a low standing in life. Blame the Greeks. Um, the ancient Greeks. As we know, like their knowledge and philosophers are still practically worshipped uh, by our civilization. Civilization basically stands on their morals and philosophies. They don't even see women as proper beings. Like they're. Do you know what I mean? Like they're a slaven. 
like they're lower than they're as low as the animals in their opinion they're like yeah they <laughs> they put them on a level with the farmyard animals the men of ancient Greece or women like that practically Plato's Timius it says something I can't remember the exact words but almost like that you know a lot of these upper echelon peoples they use the, the old Greek stuff as their morals in life. That's how they... I mean, okay. I don't know that for sure. I bloody hope Boris Johnson doesn't. See, that's something I've talked about in my videos. Got has had no interest whatsoever about the true role that women play that they actually have much more power than men they are of sub substance they can manifest men cannot we have no power to manifest without a woman you ain't gonna make anything happen And I'm nowhere nearer to getting my soulmate. She absolutely is not playing the game <laughs> at all. I blame her cat. <laughs> it must be psychically putting her off. You know, things will happen when they're meant to happen. I know that. I'm okay, I'm okay. Yeah. The other things I talked about, the mood waves. Um, they're still true. Men are on their year one now we're just going over the top September equinox so women are at the, at the bottom of their year one just coming up and what I've really noticed is the sort of the times when you feel it the times when it's when it's affecting you um, it's very much the changes that we feel and um, well, I'll say that. On the daily wave, it's very much the changes we feel. Once we've changed and we're set the way we're going, we're, we're okay with it. The daily one, it's the change. So that's in the middle of the day when you get your change. So it's either a nice change, so you're feeling nice, or it's uh, unnice, so you're feeling anxious or whatever. But um, it's interesting because I, th you know, sometimes it's been years, right? And I, but I've been thinking, uh, what was I, what was it last month? Was it on the even days or the odd days? And, you know, I think it is possible that, that there are occasions when I've, um, you know, forgotten. So at some point, what I'm going to have to do is go back to one of my older videos well, first of all, you know, write down what I think I'm on and then go back to one of my older videos and see if I if I've switched it. Um, so that would be an interesting experiment. But I'm also imagining at the moment, so I've also lost track of the moon a bit. And I think the moon is the one that affects us um, sort of like the most, in a sense, like that's the one that really runs us uh, it's, because the daily one you know you can just wait a few hours and you'll be out of it 
you know, so the daily ones you like your daily grime. And if you know about the, the waves and when they're up and down, and you'll think, well, yeah, I'll be feeling better in a few hours, or feeling better tomorrow, or got something to look forward to coming up tomorrow. But the moon one, you can't, you know, it's a period of 60 days from the, the whole wavelength. Um, so up to down to up again would be 60 days, roughly, two moons. So, you know, that's a period of time that you are kind of, you know, you can't get out of that so easily, can you? You're like, oh, I've just got to wait 30 days. you kind of got to live that one. You've got to, you've got to endure that one. And the year one is, um, you know, a bit weaker. So you're not really feeling it all the time. It's a bit more subtle. It more sort of affects how strong the moon and day ones are, if you like, um, rather than being so effect. But over the long period of time, you notice, like, you know, if you were thinking, you know, I used to be better at, I used to be, I don't seem to be on form as I was, you know, back however long ago that was sort of thing, you know. It's that type of one, you know. So at the moment men are on their up, so we are kind of at our best, if you like. Um, we're not finding things particularly difficult, <clears throat> happy go lucky type thing and uh but, you know, we we're, we're moving on on the down way so we you know now we've got a long run down to next september when we'll be at the bottom and the 19 year one i'm seeing um i'm seeing signs that i've got that right because obviously i only discovered that what was it about a year ago um, so I haven't done really long enough to... Well, obviously I'm looking think of the past and how things were, and that's how um, I feel I'm right about it. But especially seeing with this um, Prince William, the earth shot thing, you know, this is for the next decade. So I think, you know, there's, there's positive things coming out, even though, you know, they're trying to chuck us down with COVID. <coughs> <laughs> and trying to keep us down, and that you know it, that is is bugging me now. I'm going to start. Um, I'm going to start not being compliant, and you know if I get threatened with a fine or something, I'll say you know, fine, take me to court. I'm not paying it. This is an infringement of our human rights. It's getting on now because. Um, you know, the second wave definitely isn't as harmful as the first wave, and the first wave wasn't even that particularly harmful, seeing as they were just branding everybody with COVID, inducing people into comas because, you know, that was the quickest thing to do. Uh, I know that went on. We've heard plenty of it. And, um, you know, so it's just big scare stories, a way that they whoever these evil entities are who are clearly against humanity all you know all having a good time and rising up i mean don't rich people want the poor people to be happy a bit you know i'm sure they do i'm sure they would rather that there wasn't um extreme unhappiness i was about to say poverty but you know, you can't really talk about poverty when, if you're living in a rainforest and you can just go and get food and you can whack up some shelter, you know, and then somebody comes along and goes, oh, it's such a travesty, um, you don't get paid anything, you have no money, you're the poorest person in the world. But they're not, are they? They've got everything they need. They're the richest person in the world. <laughs> so, but saying that, you know, clearly there are, I've seen it in Kenya, you know, there was a 
in Nairobi, people walking about five or ten miles to get to some industrial area and st in the morning, first thing in the morning, and stand in a queue basically and people come up and go, yeah, I'll have you ten, yeah, and you fuck off, you ten get in there, you know, and the ones who get in there would get paid a dollar or two for their day's work. <laughs> there would be any, you know, lunch put on for them, no breaks, just work. Who are we giving you jobs? Look at what good we're doing, giving you employment. You know, I wouldn't feel good about slaving people and then saying we're giving you employment. But there we go. You know, that's what that's what they've um, had to do. So yes, so yes, poverty. If you're having to work so many hours for such little money that is poverty but included in these figures are people who and the, the other thing is you know they they also could if their land use wasn't being used to grow tea and bananas and everything else for the west they could use their the land where they in their area they could use it to grow um, all sorts of wonderful things that they could consume themselves and barter amongst themselves and everybody could have a share they would then have a, a much better quality of life but we in the west have stolen that from them she's wrong I suppose and you know can I give it back should I stop buying chocolate powder I don't want to because I like it. I eat a lot of chocolate and I like it. I like a chocolate and it's there. You know, it's there when I walk in the shop. It's a quid for two. No brainer. Chuck two in the basket. <laughs> it's a quid. You know, buy milk and stuff. I would rather it be different. I would actually myself like to go and live in Africa and live like I just suggested. But that ain't reality and that isn't what's happening. But I in regards to pleasures and things, I, you know, I think when I die, I'm I'm not going to be able to have these things. Um, I'm here now. Why why would I? Why would I? Um, what's the word? Withhold pleasure from myself. What do I do? I hate myself. Am I just going to do nothing? Well, then I might as well not be here. And if I do too much of something, it, I've seen it before, it's built in, it, it ends up hurting you. So, you know, is it wrong? It should be fairer. We can surely agree. And, um,. You know that that land in Africa. Uh, I think it, you know the land is the land. It, all over the world, those who lay claim to the land, they lay claim to it, and then they protect it, and they use force, or at least threaten force to protect it. You can't protect it in any other way. It's all backed by force at the end of the day. That's the reality of the world we live in. So until we find a better way, we're stuck with it. 
And I have shown a better way, haven't I? And I do the communities video. Not communism, but communityism. That's what we should have. And basically it would it would be, you know, you'd be in your postcode, your area, 150 people, you're a community. You've got to be self-sufficient. Hierarchies, age. And you'll have liaisons who liaise with other communities. You'll have to produce something. You have to produce something so that you can barter trade with other communities. I think we can't have it tomorrow. That would be ridiculous. But we can have some sort of design, fair design, that we can begin working towards. You know, I just know, and this is one of the other things I know, I just know that your technology isn't going to solve the problems. It's going to alleviate some of the symptoms. But the causal problem is what needs to be fixed. What is the causal problem? Well, first of all, we've got to look after the planet, number one. So anything we do that doesn't benefit the planet needs to be eventually needs to be eradicated. So why why do you need to mow your lawn all throughout the summer? Why do you need to mow it at all? You know that if you walk on the grass, it won't grow. Haven't you seen paths where people walk? It doesn't grow. So if you need to walk on a bit of your garden, continue walking on it. And it will stay walkable. And then the rest of the garden that you don't walk on, that you're not using, can grow. And you have a tree pop up in ten years like a forest and it'll be those young trees first those fast growing ash and cherry they'll spring up quick and they live for about 70 years and at that point they would die but by then you probably have a couple of oaks growing and a hawthorn and something else and they live longer and get bigger and all these trees trees the mother is supporting you know little creatures and birds and then it goes down in the ground deep roots and that's what we're neglecting big time so yeah we're not gonna continue to thrive if we don't look after the planet then the next thing we need is to have fulfilling lives and when I was first getting these feelings rapture with God you know, I'd never had anything so fulfilling before. When I was shedding my facades, seeing my arrogance, I felt like there was nothing better that I could do for myself, for other people. Because when you help yourself, you also help those nearest to you. You help your children, your friends, your family. 
So it's all, it's all like win-win, it's all no-brainer really. So what's the answer? The kingdom is within you. It's the best advice you can give anyone. Just say that, don't say anything else. Because the more you say, the more ambiguous it gets. You want instructions. Say the kingdom is within you. You could add on a few things. I usually do. Where's my lighter? Fire, fourth element, plasma, plasma baby, expanding earth, plasma universe, there's no dark matter, well, Whatever's in black holes ain't dark matter. It's a portal to another universe. Because you know whose universe we're in. Whose atoms these belong to. That we borrow. Zach once says that people come to my channel they want to see me what's me I'm not these atoms it's just borrowed this is borrowed and that one's even fake me is the life force coming out so that's why you always look in the eyes it's the life force yeah I was taking a drag. Yeah, in a minute. In a minute. When I'd satisfied my curiosity to the point, I was like, yeah, I don't need to know anymore <laughs> about the big things, you know, the things far off. I was like, to God, what shall I do now? And I got a phone call from my son's mum saying, Come get your son. <laughs> and I'd always wanted him to come live with me. And it's been a year and a half. So that's... That's cut down on, yeah, my seeking but like I said you know I had I had felt like I'd done enough of that and it's good because there's so many big things I've got into that I want to look at you know more of the detail get more interested in some of the detail and refine it and uh, before I leave this mortal coil maybe I can um, explain it better but then again it needs to be sought every individual needs to do their own seeking to understand it for themselves you know there's nothing like learning something for yourself when you've you've got interested in it you've sought more information and I I ought you know, I use other people. I tell you what, you can learn something from everyone, and that's humbling. They will, who, no matter who they are, they could teach you something. And I try and remember that. Because it's great to learn. 
And the, yeah, the, there's endless things to learn, more detail in this area and that area. So, that's all good. So yeah, but anyway, but I do, I do think that it's good to leave um, the, you know, I'm glad that I've done YouTube. I'm glad I've spoken about things I've found out about my journey and everything and discovery and could well be helpful if it doesn't get locked away and forgotten about but might get remembered might get pulled out one day in a, my next life I often think about that so here's a message for the person in the next life me uh, hi <laughs> sort it out love do it all with love I'm glad that video of mine's going the one love living waters it's so right um, we're dead without love you know? love is the only substance love is the driving force but me I just want to talk about personality you know and me that's different from you and we're all different amazingly it's like my vessel so think of it as a colored glass vessel and love will th flow through it or God will pour love in or fill my cup with love from something else but when the one love is flowing and I've, I've had some new um, see if I can get it I'm increasing my capacity to uh, sit with love and it did something and it felt, and I can get back into it now and then fully sort of thing, but I probably won't manage now. Because for a long time I've had this pressure in my back. <coughs> you know, it, it was this pressure and I was sort of gradually allowing it and then it, and then I was just sitting there not trying, you know, this is the thing. I'd not try and I'm just sitting there and then suddenly I felt this thing like it was wide sort of, you know, take me on. And it's not God, because I can still feel father and mother here in my temples. And if I want to trace them to the points of entry up and down. And it's not, don't think it's another entity. Um, definitely it's the one love. And then I'm I'm at one with the one love, who also the father is and the mother. They're also at one with the one love. But because me and the father are male, we have the male part of the one love. And the females, I can't say this for sure, but when I first got into this, this is what I thought, because the one love seemed to want me to do something that was connect with my other half and her one love so that and the female one love is different it's like rainbow and the male one love is like white light so I'm at one with the one love and the father is also at one with the one love and I believe something like that was said in the Bible And no, that doesn't make, that's not what makes me think I am the Christ. And I see people using the Christ word clearly wrongly. They, when they say the Christ in you, surely they're talking about the one love in you. Because um, the Christ means the chosen one. And I think it's because they don't want to drop the idea of Jesus because they love that name. Jesus whereas it should be attributed to our mother and father God it gets attributed to uh, the 
the Christ Yeshua. So there's that. <laughs> there's that. Think of a song. I don't know if I can remember this. in it because if I say to someone on YouTube the heart doesn't lie they'll come back with a quote from the Bible saying the heart is a treacherous thing and shouldn't be trusted
That'll do. <coughs> Like, what was this thing in there, you know? Breathe in, right? How many times when you breathe in do you think, you know, that's the gift of life? If every time I didn't breathe in, if it didn't give me that, that spark to live. One of my deepest meditations, all I had with me was the point of my nostrils. I was breathing very slowly, but I could still just about feel it. And my heart, and it wasn't my physical heart. It was here. And that, I knew, was my only possession. And that was the only thing that I could call mine. And the breath on my nostrils was God. Nurturing me. We're in God. When I say my prayer at the end. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. So be it. Forever and ever I'm going to be in God. At one point in meditation that felt quite claustrophobic. I could feel God. I could feel God's mother and father. I could feel their mother and father. And... All I had it was me and I was in God. But I endured, endured that and it doesn't take that long. It's more like the decision, the faith to go with it, to feel the reality of it. So, that'll do, and I'm going to play the intro on the way out, why not? Ah, oh, lost it, where is it there? Yo, what's good my Jesus please? Good tidings to you, glory be to God, Jesus, our mother and father. Let us go forth naturally as we should with faith, honesty, joy and enthusiasm and reject the negative notions of hopelessness, of dependence on things, of anticipation of what may come and trying to force events. Let us go for it. Yo, 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 yo,